Now, Monday, just this Monday, the FDA announced that cattle blood will no longer, or chicken feces for that matter, will no longer be allowed in the feed of most animals, which is certainly a step forward, but unfortunately, too little, much too late. And that's because we continue to feed billions of pounds of slaughterhouse waste to pigs and chickens, so cattle remains to pigs and chickens, and then feed those same pigs and chickens straight back to the cows. Prion diseases are actually the only disease for which two separate Nobel Prizes were ever awarded. And the first Nobel went to a guy named Geidecek, who was quoted on Dateline NBC as saying, quote, it's got to be in the pigs as well as the chickens. It's got to be passing through the chickens, excuse me, as well as the cattle. Paul Brown, medical director of the U.S. Public Health Service, believes that pigs and poultry could indeed be harboring this disease and passing it on to humans through meat. We're concerned that these animals, even though they're slaughtered too young to actually show this disease, could, what are term, could be what are termed silent carriers of the disease and pass it along to susceptible species like human beings. We are the only country in the world with mad cow disease that continues to allow the feeding of slaughterhouse waste in this kind of indirect cannibalism circuit um, here in the U.S. Europe, for example, bans the feeding of all slaughterhouse waste to livestock. The U.S. should do the same. The American Feed Industry Association, however, disagrees. They call such a ban a radical proposition. The American Meat Institute also disagrees, stating, quote, no good is accomplished by prejudicing segments of society against the meat industry, unquote. We need to close up the loopholes and we need strict enforcement. Four years after the so-called ban went into effect, up to a quarter of the plants were found in violation of these feed regulations, these feeble regulations in the first place. And the law just says you have to label your feed. So you have to label anything containing cattle remains. Do not feed to cows or other ruminants. Right? You can still sell this stuff. You can still buy this stuff. Any farmer can walk into any feed store and still buy it. No one asks them, wait a second. Are you just feeding this to pigs, pets, and poultry? Or are you feeding this to cows too? As hard as it has been to enforce these regulations among feed plants and rendering mills, it's practically impossible to enforce it among the country's million livestock producers. There is zero policing on the ranch itself, so it shouldn't even be available for sale. We also need to make creutzfeldt jakob disease, the human disease, a reportable illness here in the U.S. Neuropathologists are paranoid. No one wants to do autopsies on human atypical dementia cases because they're afraid of catching this disease, right? You've got to come in, in a, like a spacesuit, and it's difficult to sterilize your instruments. When a few intrepid researchers have, however, actually gone back and looked at the brains of presumed Alzheimer's deaths, meaning it said Alzheimer's on the death certificate, anywhere between 3 and 13% of those Alzheimer's cases were actually CJD. Between 3 and 13 percent of Alzheimer's cases are actually Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. Four million Americans are afflicted with Alzheimer's disease. The Centers for Disease Control says that Alzheimer's is the eighth leading cause of death in the United States. How many people in this audience personally know someone who died with Alzheimer's disease? Well, based on the best science we have, 3 to 13 percent of you are wrong. You actually knew someone that died of Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. And new research suggests that some of these so-called sporadic one in a million CJD cases may actually be caused by mad cow disease, or maybe infected lamb, or even infected pork. So hundreds, or even Thousands of Americans could already be dying from mad cow disease because of mad cow disease every year in this country. But how could that be, though? Right? There's only been one case of mad cow disease found in the U.S. Ah, there's only been one case found in the United States. How many one finds is a function of how hard one looks for the disease. 
Mad cow disease doesn't come in isolated cases, right? Because cows don't get like their little individual TV dinners, right? There was infected feed and now there are infected cows. How many? We will never know until we actually test more for the disease. Europe has millions fewer cattle than we do, yet they're testing a million cows every month. France, which has just about a fraction of our cattle population, tests more every week than we've tested in our entire 14-year testing history. Germany tests about 60,000 a week, more than we've tested in a decade. And Germany also once confidently declared itself BSE free until they actually started testing for it intently and found 30 cases within the first two months. You cannot find what you're not looking hard enough for. Dr. Stanley Prusner, the world's expert on these diseases, he won the 1997 Nobel Prize in Medicine for his discovery of prions, describes the level of testing done by the USDA as appalling. In fact, there's circumstantial evidence that we've had mad cows in the U.S. since 1960, decades ago. Prusner is calling for universal testing, testing every cow slaughtered for human consumption like they do over in Japan. Now, if we did do more testing, how many mad cows might we find? Well, we won't know, obviously, until we do it, but based on the testing so far, the chair of the Department of Biostatistics down at the University of Texas made an estimate. Estimates that we may have thousands of cows infected with mad cow disease slaughtered every year. That means Americans may be eating millions, literally millions, of servings of infected beef every year. Now, to anyone familiar with our agricultural practices, the discovery of mad cow disease in North America came as no surprise. But given the appallingly inadequate surveillance we've been doing, the fact that we actually found a case was quite a shock. And actually, we seem to pick it up almost as a fluke, which I'd be happy to talk about as well. Every year, an estimated 195,000 to 1.8 million cattle collapse in the U.S. for largely unknown reasons and are too sick or injured to rise. Every year, we have hundreds of thousands of these so-called downer cattle in the U.S. And even though these downed animals were not even fit enough to stand, an investigation of USDA slaughter records showed that most of them were still ruled fit enough for human consumption. And these animals can be the sickest of the sick. Gangrene, malignant, cancerous growth. I mean, this dragged, hauled alive by bulldozer to the slaughterhouse. And the majority went straight onto the American dinner plate. The World Health Organization recommends that every single downer animal, every single downer cow, be tested for mad cow disease in the United States. Instead, we put ketchup on them. Why has only one case of mad cow disease been discovered in the U.S.? Perhaps it's because Americans have been eating all of the evidence. For years, meat from downer cattle has been excluded by law from the federal school lunch program. So the government recognized that this meat was too risky to feed to America's school children at school, but not too risky to feed to them once they got home from school, and not too risky for adults, for that matter. Finally, though cows too sick to even walk have been excluded from the entire human food supply. Yet there are still hundreds of thousands of downer pigs for example, and other animals dragged into the slaughterhouse and killed for human consumption. Congressman Gary Ackerman is introducing a bill to ban all downer animals from the human food supply, which I encourage everyone to pressure your elected officials to support.